All right. It is 9.10 now in India. We should start our session. Today is the 4th of September, 2021. Today's topic, interrelation between a physical body, mind and soul. This topic actually, a uh, little bit of recapitulation and uh, for those who join new, for them, for the understanding, so that when we talk about something, soul, and we different uh, different states of mind, then we can correlate with uh, with all these things. So I will initially I will present a few slides um, and I will explain simultaneously. So so it will be clear that what we are talking. Then we'll go into the question answer session and the detail of understanding. So this is why it is planned to discuss on this issue and uh, so that we are all in the same plane understanding wise or over the period of time when we grow into spirituality the different meanings of all this comes up. So even if some of you has attended earlier workshops and uh, this courses on this and you saw this, but again, it will be an opportunity to review that. And if you have any uh, further understanding comes up, then we can we can discuss it. So that is the purpose. So I have chosen this topic for today. So what I will uh, do is I will go into those slides first and I will explain one by one, then go into further detail explanation on, on that one. So it is important to understand this uh, interrelation between the physical body, mind and soul from the spiritual perspective. It is not necessarily what is a common understanding is. That is why we need to know the, exactly what we meant by that. And uh, the clear understanding will lead us, lead us to that uh, higher level of you know, spiritual growth, and then accordingly we can move forward. So let me just start uh, sharing this uh, slides. But there are a few tables there. It is not a visual, but uh, just I will explain with vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, when the table is displayed. So let us start with that one. Can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay, good. See, we, this is, uh, we are much more than a physical body with a mind. So this is the, uh, the understanding we have higher bodies. So so-called me is not limited to this physical body alone. So what we have, we have the seven body system and they are first one is called physical body. In this, uh, in Sanskrit, it's called Annamai Kosha. And then the second one, the etheric body, energy body, or we can see them as an aura. So um, if you raise your vibration, we can see the aura of people. So that is, that is this uh, energy, etheric body and aura. Second is emotional or astral body. So that is the third body and then go to the next fourth one is a mental or knowledge body. This knowledge is not the things we gather from the external world. It is that that knowledge uh, we download from the universe, like universal knowledge or Brahma again. So this uh, fifth body is a causal or primic body. And this is where all the karma things are stored. This is this in higher level. So next is the cosmic or consciousness of spiritual body. So that is the sixth one. Here this, this body, the oneness is felt in this body. And seven bodies, it's not a body or it's not a layer. It is a nirvanic body or divine body when it is the whole identity of the soul is merged with the universal consciousness. So that is called the Nirvana. So this is the final stage. So 
we experience first through the physical body and then these all these bodies are active during that state but normally we cannot access this unless and unless until we quieten our mind if the mind is in the physical body if it is not quietened then we will not have access to this higher bodies so that is why we practice this meditation to go into to get in touch with that and in our six step meditation when we practice we cross all these things and we final state the expanded awareness state we come to this level this cosmic consciousness spiritual level where we we can experience that oneness uh, with the divine and on the on the process we can also see the causal body or karmic body we can get this uh, our karmic files and what is what are the things are past lives everything is available here when all this karmic thing uh, body is cleaned that body is called bliss body so all these masters they have a bliss body there is no karma left there it's a clean and glowing body so and this is this is how the seven body systems we have so that means human body is not limited to physical body with a mind it is it is actually the package of all four and individually they have their own role there so looking at the seven body system i often uh, you know people ask me that uh, we don't uh, where is the soul then where this is no soul here so soul actually in my direct experience is that uh, it is a package of third fourth fifth and sixth body this is you know is collectively it is called soul means we call it soul so emotional body mental body causal body where the karmic things are there and the cosmic the consciousness uh, spiritual body these package is called soul why this package is called soul because at the time of death only this fast to body get dissolved the physical body goes to the five elements the etheric energy body goes to the take stays there 11 to 13 days then goes back to the energy pool of sun and uh, and then rest of the things rest of these bodies are there so uh, this uh, the emotional mental causal cosmic there so collectively what you see this pink uh, color box this is collectively we call it as a soul now this how this uh, so when the person often we get a question when a person dies where they go they just go into the higher plane we call astral plane or it is also in um, in hinduism they call it pitru loka so that is a that is a minimum then there is a all higher planes are there that's a different subject so let us not trouble our intellect too much in the which are the level which are the sub level and who can enter when and where so don't bother about that just you consider they go to the higher plane energetically they exist but physically they don't so they have a when you drop the physical body physical body is the grossest of all it needs a lot of energy to uh, to manifest to move and to get things done but when you drop the physical body it is you get a lot of flexibilities you get in this level there is no time and space so you can instantly manifest everywhere or anywhere you like to go and that body sometime we seen as an orb they appear like that it can be captured in the digital camera it is a transparent globe sort of thing so uh, and we have found many photographs we have taken earlier i showed so this is one area we are meditating and these are the orbs so you can see the white color round shaped uh, shades there yeah here 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 can you see that yes sir yeah i yes, because sir. while presenting i cannot see the your uh, you know video i'm just that's why verbally just let me know so and so forth then uh, we had in the muscat uh, we had some guruji has a program in 
and then this the oils and here here is a musk uh, narvekar who is in this our session today and so these are the uh, the very light color this light shade you cannot we may not see properly there are a lot of orbs here then here i'm just blessing one bride of my brother in law's wife and there are some orbs behind me or there are some orbs you can see in front of the tv screen as well anyway so that is not yes, the sir, yeah it's not the main uh, uh, issue and it is that i'm just explaining the how it looks like there is seven body system so here by now everybody is clear what is soul this this remember this this is the pink color border like emotional body mental body causal body and cosmic body this package will refer as a soul or soul consciousness it has got a individual identity it is with with us in the lifetime after lifetime so it doesn't uh, um so we all the experiences they go into this this body we gather our knowledge and experience the stored here and causal means the cause of everything but the new life is formed from here they design the new life which to reduce the karmic burden or settle the karmic accounts so that is what the soul plans the next incarnation when the next incarnation happens the new energy body and physical body is formed and the person takes birth again so that's how that's how it plays now let me go to the mind level okay this is the different states of mind is explained here so if you say it is 2 by 2 table so the top one the heading of top uh the columns are knowledge of i uh, who am i what i am doing this if i know it that is called knowledge of i and the heading of second column is uh, my knowledge of is yes means it's there and second column is knowledge of i is no it is not there means i don't know who am i now this row column is two by two table the row column is if you have the knowledge of surroundings if the answer is yes then this is the first row and if the knowledge of surroundings is no then this is the second row so just i repeat here column two by two table column first column title is knowledge of i is there yes and second column represents knowledge of i is not there so it is no row uh, title first row title knowledge of surroundings is yes then that is the first row and knowledge of surrounding is no that is the second row now let us let let us come to each quadrant each uh, you know boxes of the table and see where it is so first first column first row this is this is knowledge of i yes yes i know who am i and knowledge of surrounding where i am sitting you know what is the you know temperature of the ac and who is with me all these things what i am doing so say currently you are listening to this uh listening to this session so from your mobile or laptop that's what you're doing so you're aware who you are what is your name and also what is your surrounding what you are doing so this particular state of uh, mind is called awake state of mind so you are awake and it is operated by the conscious mind and that is a state of mind is conscious mind and in sanskrit it is known as jagrut avastha <clears throat> so all of you currently you are in jagrut avastha so that is the you are in this first quadrant of this table now let us go to the second one which is a first column second row so this is the when we we sleep we dream so that it is called dream state as per the mind and it is primarily operated by the subconscious mind and it is in sanskrit known as 
स्वप्नावस्था नाउ लेट अस कम टू द सेकेंड रो एंड सेकेंड कॉलम द लोअर मोस्ट कॉर्नर दट बॉक्स वेन इन द स्लीप स्टेट वेन यू गो टू द डीप स्लीप देन वी डोंट ड्रीम सबकॉन्शियस माइंड ऑल्सो इज द साइलेंट देयर एंड वी डोंट हैव एनी रिकॉल द मेमरी ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग सो दिस कॉल डीप स्लीप और इफ समी गोज इन टू कोमा दे गो इन टू दिस स्टेट एंड हियर वी कॉल इट एज एन अनकॉन्शियस माइंड सो दे कैनॉट बी एनी रिकलेक्शन ऑफ दैट एंड इट इज इन संस्कृत नोन एज शुषुप्त अवस्था ऑल वाई आई एक्सप्लेन दिस थ्री बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ अस during when we we during our day to day course and uh, you know when we sleep we go through all these three stages every day like awake state when we are awake when we are sleeping but dreaming that is the subconscious mind operated state so conscious subconscious and when we go into deep sleep invariably during some proportion of the time we go into deep sleep the doctors can measure when they measure the sleep then they found that uh, during uh, dream state people do some rapid eye movement rem they call that can be recorded when rem is happening that time the person is you know dreaming in during the same sleep when the rem stops they go into deep sleep so that is the second stage here and this is this is the rep- representation of unconscious mind so these three state जागृत अवस्था स्वप्न अवस्था सुसुप्त अवस्था ऑल थ्री स्टेट ऑल ऑफ अस वी डू एवरी डे दिस इज दिस फोर्थ स्टेट इट इज इन द फर्स्ट रो एंड सेकेंड कॉलम मीन्स नॉलेज ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ सराउंडिंग इज देयर बट नॉलेज ऑफ आई इज नॉट देयर ओके लेट मी फर्स्ट गो बैक टू द स्वप्न स्वप्न अवस्था ड्रीम स्टेट knowledge of surround um, uh, this uh, knowledge of i is there means who you are in the dream you know which character you are but knowledge of surrounding is no when you sleeping you don't know where you are sleeping which is the color of your wall and what temperature of the ac is during sleep you don't know so that's why this is the it come into this this category and of course the deep sleep you nothing you don't know who you are neither you are aware of the surrounding so that is a deep sleep or this uh, state unconscious mind so i now let me come back to this uh, this fourth state is knowledge of surrounding is yes which is in the first row but the second column so this is a top most a uh, top right uh, that uh, box so here this actually It, normally we don't come across normal people they don't come across this state we can only achieve this state by meditation when our mind is silenced then we are mind is silenced then what happens is at one point of time our ego drops so that time you don't know who you are okay but at the same time you are fully aware of your surroundings you can listen to any sound you can you can feel the temperature you can feel the air on your screen what we do in the sixth step you remember those are the things we can do so we are fully aware of our surroundings even at this stage during meditation it can go louder even a minor sound happens it amplifies it comes very loudly because we are very much attentive and the this high alert state the all the external inputs even go high but we the identity is lost the ego mind gets dropped and we that time we merged into the divinity we don't we don't associate ourselves with the lower i or the physical identity that we have and this this is a meditative state and in sanskrit it is known as turiyavastha and this particular state is operated by super conscious mind super conscious mind is background of everything all spiritual experiences happen in the super conscious mind state you know it, it this conscious subconscious unconscious mind 
it is not possible to have that kind of experience when the mind is mind is still chattering or something it's not possible so when the stillness of mind is achieved mind is silenced we to deep meditation we touch upon the superconscious mind which is the background of everything then we have all those kind of experiences and we go into in this state only we go into this higher higher bodies we go into this access to higher bodies at this state otherwise we cannot have the experience of these bodies if if we are in awake or if the mind is still working and injecting thoughts in our mind so now this is our topic today the interrelation between mind body and soul so i have explained what is soul i have explained what are the states of mind so here is a summary of what what each and every every mind body and soul does at the each stage first state of mind when the mind is awake our body is active we are working talking eating or whatever the mind body is active and that time the soul is in witness mode it just observes it doesn't interfere we have a free will contract with the soul so any kind of activity any kind of thinking any kind of decision you take soul is not involved there they are simply witnessing second stage which is a dreaming a state or a swapna avastha our physical state of the body is sleeping again it is soul is in the witness state some people think that during dream we interact with soul we know that that's not the right understanding this uh, dream comes from our subconscious mind this subconscious mind and where the this soul operates in this superconscious mind so they it is not the same subconscious mind what you, whatever stored in your memory or you know past experiences or anything you are thinking about it those subconscious mind get released during the dream and that comes with the dream so to make it clear dream is not a spiritual experiences dream can be your mind construct so whatever you are receiving the dream that is not spiritual of course there are some cases happened where dream has been used to convey some messages but those are rare those are not common like you are doing day dreaming or thinking about something and dreaming is almost similar so it's it's operated by your conscious or subconscious mind so it is not it is not the spiritual experience as we are talking here now this when we go to the third state of mind which is unconscious state you know susupta avastha it is and body is still sleeping it is in deep sleep state body is sleep sleeping if this is listen very carefully this is the time soul gets active because the body is no longer conscious neither neither it is working anything soul leaves our body and it goes into the higher dimension and it does its job meet with different thing get something to heal the body or maybe some our departed souls we can meet with them and things like that so this soul then leaves the body so it happens for everybody it is not for the masters all of your soul leaves your physical body when it is in the deep sleep and higher dimension there is no time and space so don't think to travel something or visit some of your past birth or meet with somebody they take a very long time it can done instantly in our time even if there is a 10 minutes of deep sleep they can cover if 50 60 jobs and come back so that much that much fast it is in our time concept wise i'm just giving you the concept but of course there are case by case things happens so some of the things can take more time etc so then again when we start dreaming or trying to get up instantly the soul comes back and then it enters the body and then we get up so this is that 
So soul becomes active at that state. So now what happens is when we are active, soul is not active. But when we are inactive, then soul gets active. And this is the main reason most of the people that they, they, they get never get chance to interact with their soul. They don't know what is the soul's plan is. But the soul is advising them or what is the way their life should be because they are fully controlled by their ego mind and they operate. Most of the people live their full life without any interaction with their soul. It is quite possible. And that's how, because these three state, every, everybody undergoes every day. So this is how we operate. So our spiritual journey starts when we start getting into this fourth zone where we go through meditation, if we can silence our mind, go into the Turiya state, our body is meditating. This is the time we can actually interact with your soul. Interact means two-way communication. We'll ask some question to our soul and soul will answer it and we'll understand it, what is the answer. That is an interactive mode. Means if you say the prayer and all these things, sending request is possible here. That is one way communication, like a sending a text message. But this interactive means it is a phone call, like you are talking and you are getting the response instantly. So this is the interactive state and that is coming to during the studio state. So that is how we interact with our soul. And this is the interrelation between mind, body and soul. I will stop sharing here. So you can see me? Yes, sir. Okay, so I have stopped the presentation. You have seen the last slide of the presentation, right? The mind, body, soul. Okay, very good. Okay, I'll stop here for some time and then go for further discussion. But during whatever I presented, anybody has any question, you can ask me now before we go to the further discussion on these issues. Lasdeep, what is the significance of those orbs? Orbs are just the souls without the physical body. They are departed souls or they are, they can be ascended masters. Every few thousand years they didn't born here on planet Earth. They can come as orb. So that is a higher uh, bodies without physical body. Uh, Guruji, may I ask one thing? Uh, after my day, uh, after 13 days of my day, what happens yeah. to my soul? Do I become like that? Uh, yes, you become like that. But after 13 days, what happens that your energy, uh, energy yeah. body, that get yeah. disseminated in the energy pool of the sun. It doesn't go back to the sun, but art, we have the energy pool. Means everything on the art is the coming from the sun, the energy. What we eat, you know, all our physical energy is all coming from sun. No? Art itself has been uh, um, formed out of the sun. You know, in the geography, we, write, we read that one fireball came out and cooled down and form art, something like that. So this, there is an energy pool available on earth, yep. which is came, originally came from sun. So we merge into second body, merge into that energy pool. But I mean, I mean, to, I want to ask you one thing that uh, in that state, uh, do I remember anything in the uh, before my uh, about my past life and all that, or nothing? No, no. When you shed your lower body, you go to the soul consciousness. So mind is no longer there. So you you get access to all this. Yeah. Your past lives, everything. Yes. But first 11 to 17 days, what happens is uh, 11 to 13 days, what happens is the second body is there. Hmm. And it has got all this, you know, they have a... And what happened? Are... At... Sorry? No, I need to say what happened. No, I am asking you what happened between uh, first to 13 days. Yeah, I'm explaining that. Okay. 
during first to that 13 days people they yeah. the physical body maybe it is a burned or it is uh, you know put it into grave or something yeah it will go back to the five elements ultimately put it in water or whatever birds eat it whatever the thing is but the rest that second body and second onward body yeah. remains okay and they have that habit pattern or some eating like a food they whatever food they like you know the desire still is there in the second body okay so in uh, some hindu customs they offer the favorite food you might have seen to the rooftop by the family members yeah and uh, there's some birds come and eat those food and they say oh bird they the soul they become bird and came and eating it is nonsense okay so the soul doesn't convert it into bird what happens is yes. yeah you don't have the uh, the physical body but you would want to enjoy food suppose somebody uh, uh, likes to eat, 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 yeah. eat the fish fry okay favorite food okay so they offer fish fry on the rooftop so what have, what happens is they don't have physical body yeah. they come and move around that place similar type of all but bigger size the weight is about 52 g hmm, little bigger Yeah. Sometimes they have a shape of the body also because all aura is there. Slowly, slowly it comes down and forms yeah. the globe. So they move around that uh, that food and smell that food. You know, by smelling they get a satisfaction of having the food. That's why we call it ghana madhya bhojana. Smelling is half food taken because they have actually mouth to eat. No, where they will digest. Achha. just by smelling yeah. they get the satisfaction of having the food okay and then when they finish they move away you know they are satisfied as if you have eaten your stomach is full normally we say we leave the you know food plate yeah. or whatever it is similarly they leave the place the birds they can see this the energy body because their vibrations is higher they can see that yeah somebody is coming and moving around of that food so when they leave it that time they jump and eat that food okay so what i'm saying is those souls they don't come as a bird the bird they can see that particular soul is coming and having roaming around that place they wait till they finish and then when that left they get satisfied and then they get into that so that is that is this you know right understanding of what is happening there Okay, Sonali. No, I no, uh, no. But I am asking you: after thirteen days, do you miss our relatives, relations, and all that? They go into Pitri Loka. Pitri Lok, higher dimension. Ah, uh, but at that time, do you miss our relations? I could not. Ah, uh, do you mm. miss our relations, relatives, and oh, all yes. that? Do we? Yes. I mean to say that do we meet? I mean, uh, okay. No, we meet your our question. Relations and relations. No, you mean to say after they depart, whether the relationship is still there, aware of the relationships or not? Yes, yes. After. Yeah, yeah. I know. Do we meet that? Yeah, relationships are I mean, still there. I mean, after thirteen days of death. Yes, they go into the that uh, um, they lose that See, two bodies. If I am having, I am having husband. Do I miss my husband after thirteen days? Yeah, but do you miss him? Your your question is not clear. Yeah. We are no, talking. Do I grieve for yeah. that relation or that person or something like that? That is what I am asking. After thirteen days of my death. Yes. No, so yeah. I am asking after thirteen. Huh? After thirteen so days. No, I am asking after thirteen days of my death. Yes. Do I miss my relation? You can. I can't hear you. Sure. I yes, do I miss can. my relations? My husband. Whether you miss. Whether you whether you miss your relation Achha. or not.
whether you miss your relation yeah, or not. Yeah. It's up to yes. you. That is what I am. It is up to you. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. At the time of leaving, whatever you are feeling after death, also you can feel similar way. You can visit that place. You can be with your relatives, but you don't have the physical body. That's it. Oh. It is yeah. your choice. What do you feel? It is up to you. Like now, what okay. you feel? It is up to you. If you wanted to meet somebody, you can go and meet yes. somebody with your physical body. And that time you don't have physical body. You go as a orb and meet. But if I miss, so then I will be always sad, no? In a spiritual state, but I mean, uh, when I'm uh, a atma or something like that, when I'm mm. just not, I don't have body. But mentally, I will be missing world, worldly relations, my uh, relatives, and all that. So that won't be a good situation, no? No. It's nothing about good so and bad. That's my point. Yeah, I understand your point. I will listen very carefully. Okay. So. Yes. Uh, you, can you silent your microphone? I will explain the whole process. Okay. Okay. Just silent you. your microphone. Okay. It, it is coming. Some uh, broken voice is coming. Just yeah. I will explain it to you. See what happens is when we will die, our soul chooses. It is not an accident, and we'll feel sad. What happened? And something has a dump on us. It is not the right understanding. We choose when to leave. we come for a mission we come for an experience when the experience is over we leave god is not punishing us by death that is a fundamental understanding make it clear just like suppose somebody is you know leaving the house forever because that is they have chosen to leave the house it is their choice after leaving when you miss or not it is up to you you may miss it it's okay that's fine okay but it is your choice to leave or not to not to leave the house or not to leave the relatives so most of the times what happens is whatever your work is there it is over okay so you have to move on to your next assignment soul point of view so you take another part and and do that assignment so you don't stick to the same you know framework all the time like you are in say i give example of the class it is easier to understand you are in class 5 now you have now graduated you have gone to class 6 and you are getting a new teacher new these things if if you, you may ask i i can i can miss my class 5 teacher maybe but that will not help you you need to grow you need to go to the next class and next higher one if you stick to the lower one you will be failed no need to fail to be in with the same teacher that's not you came for if you miss some okay few days you may miss your teacher then you start you will be busy with your new assignment and your new class and that that's it but initially you do you do miss and that is normal but that does not mean you have to fail and go back to the same class and do the same experience and again and again so this is the understanding how soul grows time of the death also defined by the soul so it is not an accident you know if you still something is balanced if some karma to be uh, to be with other relatives and all you will not die you will finish it before you go leave the body and in in other cases in case you have strong desire you know because of something that you don't want to leave they take but they get in the family that is also possible you can take but that the family has a grandchild maybe your son or daughter's daughter or something like that <clears throat> so those are all possible but at the time of thing it is missing something does not mean you have to go back okay that's why i've given an example of the class and school and that's how it works we have all the experiences and that's it we graduate and it's over so that's how it is but at the there is a possible that some period of time you may not take any birth at all it can go to few years a few hundred years okay during that period if you wish you can visit your family members as an orb that i showed you 
go there and feel their company. Suppose they are having uh, some marriage ceremony. You can go as a orb and be the attend that. I have showed you one of the marriage ceremony. I'm blessing that bride and so many relatives and all who you know past relatives, forefathers. They are coming and blessing the bride. That's quite no normal. And also, I'm telling you another thing that uh, if somebody has incarnated, already taken another birth, they can also come as an orb. It, it cannot stop them to do that. Because the higher soul level, you can operate one body and you can still be attending other souls, you know, other conference. That is also possible. Means what indirectly I'm saying that soul is not bound by a single body. It's just a one representative of simple, uh, your body. What you are saying that I leave that family, etc. At soul level, you meet all the time. Maybe you are already meeting and after death also you will meet at the soul level. Basically, you are not losing anyone. All the time they are available at the soul level to meet, interact and enjoy the company. That is always there. Even now, without death also it is there. You can have some kind of virtual tea party with your grandfather, grandmother and come back. So there is nothing for sort of thing called loss. They must have lived their body when you were in child. That's okay. But you can still have access. Every night that during deep sleep, when your soul leaves, you can meet with your forefathers, even to whom you didn't see in your lifetime. Those are all possible. Even those grandfather, grandmother taken a birth elsewhere, still you can meet at that level. So these are all possibilities and these are happen. And uh, because our idea that soul is inside the body and time frame is linear in our place, that's why we cannot understand how can, this can work. So this, but this is the fact. You are not missing anyone at the soul level. Everybody is available all the time because that is an eternal now moment. Everything is available. So you can go access, enjoy and come back to the company. So in that case, you don't miss anyone. But of course, physical things, suppose you uh, like to read one book. So some people, they visit their book or like to visit one particular place. They can come there to just to feel that ambience. That's it. But personal wise, everybody, they can meet at the soul level. No issues, no restrictions. Okay, Sonali, that, that clarifies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All yes. right. God bless you. Thank yeah. you. Any other question in this regard? Oh, uh, yes, Guruji. Uh, um, Om, go ahead. Uh, Manali, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Guruji, then what is this Prithu Paksha which is likely to come in the next 15 days? What is that? Mm -hmm. And is it correct to observe that or what is the Okay, um, don't go into correct or not correct business. Okay, <laughs> means I'm just telling you what happens. Means I'm just avoiding the question why some people they don't follow. I'm not going in there. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm not going correct or not correct. I'm telling you the facts. Okay. After we, as I explained, after the physical death, then 11 to 13 days, that next body is there. They're attached with the family and you know, they lost the body. Hmm. And during the transition, they have, they frequently visit, you know, visit the place they live, they try to meet with the thing, even try to have food with them, what they are habituated in doing. You know. That is what I explained about in Pitrupaksh. I mean, uh, sorry, you were talking about Pitrupaksh. Or after, yes, after. Every year we. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, sorry. No, sorry, they dropped that, what I explained. I, I was telling Shraddha means after death, what we do. Okay, Pitrupaksh, what happens is that there is certain point of time of, of the year, okay, because of the planetary position, moon and all those kind of things, the two layer comes very close, your art plane and the Pitrupaksh. It will be easier for people to interact and travel and things like that. So that is why we do, we pray for our forefathers and is most, they have very easily, they can come and meet us during that time. Because it is very close, the two layers, you know, astral plane and the physical plane got very close. 
it will be easier to travel from one another and you can interact. There's a more chances of meeting with your uh, forefathers at that particular period of time rather than any time else. But if you are spiritually aware, you can meet them anytime. That's not an issue. But that is, that's why that in the, the Hinduism, the ritual is to do this, do this pujas and all so that it helped that other forefathers also to, if, if they need anything from us or any kind of prayer from us, that is the time we, that is the opportunity we give them so that they can move further to their journey. That is, that is the significance of Pitru Paksh, what we do every year. And when you die, the second uh, only the second layer is roaming around. The four to six have gone up, or it is just uh, two to seven are uh, around. No, two to For seven is a uh, seven is a background. Two to six, they are with that. Two to two six. Two to six. Yeah. So they, they are they are around for thirteen days. Yeah. Okay. Then two also and goes. Then, only three to three to six remains. So two also goes only three to six remains. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. that two. two goes into the energy pool of sun. Goes back to the energy. Hmm. Just uh, Guruji, uh, now normally they are, they say five koshas, and we yeah. are defining seven bodies. Correct. So uh, uh, how do you uh, uh, correlate these five koshas with them? Physical yeah, first five called an anna kosha. Yeah, first, first five body represent Panchakosha. Oh. Physical body is called Annamaya Kosha and uh, an energy body uh, uh, called Pranamaya Kosha. Emotional body called Monamaya Kosha and knowledge body is called Gyanamaya, Vigyanamaya Kosha. And then that uh, the cosmic body uh, that that is a causal body that is known as Anandamaya Kosha. When when that gets cleaned, it becomes a bliss body. Ananda Kosha is representing that. Okay, so this uh, Vedanta, they have this five kosha system. Means you can say five and above is the fifth body. Ananda Kosha is five, six, seven. Okay. That, that's the okay. understanding if you want to correlate. Hmm. Thank you, Guru. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Manali, go ahead with your question. Uh, yes, Guruji. Uh, uh, Guruji, I just want to ask that uh, you say that we, when we uh, remember our forefather, our parents, we should always give them our love, love energy. Yeah. But yes. if I am, I am feeling sad. I was very close to my mother always, so when I'm feeling sad and she knows that I'm having so many misfortunes. So does this, my sadness or my misfortune affect them in their soul level? Because I don't want that. I want her to be happy. No, uh, let me answer this way. Whether your sadness affect their progress? No. Whether your sadness, they can feel? Yes. Okay. They can feel, but they do not necessarily, they, they, they are affected by it. Okay. Because there you get detached. Anyway, you are detached from your body, detached from everything. So you don't need to. They can feel your pain. They also send you love and, you know, like they, they try to, you know, give you solace that we are there, don't worry. And, you know, take it easy. Take your life easy. Okay. So th something like that. But uh, they don't get affected by it. Yeah. Okay. No. It doesn't harm them. Okay. Or in other way, you don't have any capacity to harm them. Okay. So it doesn't affect them, my, my sadness or... I mean, just telling no, you... They, they, can, they can feel that. They can feel that, that you are undergoing a bad patch in your life. They can feel that. But for them, for their progress or their path, it, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Guruji. Okay. All right. No, I am going to say that do they feel sad also at that time for us or nothing or nothing like uh, they do they do they feel sad that Monali is saying when she is sad for my her mother, I mean she is mm -hmm. my sister so my mother. Mm -hmm. Does my mother also feel sad for us? 
No, they have an empathetic. Okay. They don't feel sad, but they can feel your sadness. Okay. okay. They themselves they don't feel sad. Guruji, so they can feel that you you are you are not happy. They can feel that. But Guruji, do they uh, okay. help you in that case? Uh, just one Madhu, I will come back to it. Sonali, that answers your question. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, Madhu. Uh, Guruji, uh, if our um, ancestors they feel sorry for us, they feel uh, the sadness or are feeling the feel. Do they help us? If we yes, are, yes. Uh, yeah. they they help you. Okay, they help you. They can uh, you know. uh they can you can feel some reassurance or something they send some kind of signals those those are possible that we are with you don't worry take it easy and thing like that you know uh, let me give an example it will be clear suppose your son is going for class 10th exam right okay you know okay something he tried his best to prepare something but what question will come you don't know neither you have a control mm. and that exam you cannot go and sit on his behalf and appear in the exam so exam he has to face correct okay you can feel what your son is feeling little nervous you know what will come anxiety is a fast board exam or something like that you can you can feel that but you yourself don't affected by it you don't have nervous breakdown because your son is going to for the exam right okay. you don't fall sick or ill because your son is appearing same here rather we bless yeah yeah you try to say you are sure that don't worry appear in the exam okay. and you have you have prepared yourself enough uh, and those questions uh, you just come down and read the question and don't get nervous and thing like that no so you give that assurance to your child no? same here and the other side also they try to assure you so take it easy it's okay hmm. and even if even if you fail don't worry you know you appear again no issues but you this you give your best hmm. guru ji to what level our ancestors help us our uh, like my mother my mother's mother or our grandparents they all to whom we have yeah, yeah. they all they, they can they help they can help but they don't interfere yeah you have a still you have a free will they don't impose their will on you and uh, one more question guru ji like mm. you said ki uh, when somebody dies we offer uh, some uh, the kind of food he likes we keep it on the mm. roof uh, if mm. if we give that kind of food to a pandit or some other uh, poor people uh, poor person even that helps no that that helps for a as a good cause but that is for a different reason they wanted to have the food so you offer it in the rooftop they can accessibility is clear so they can come and roam around something like that okay okay the purpose is different but always you can do charity and it will help to give the charity in their name and donate something feed brahman and all that's fine those are good good karma that is good thing but that ritual is something different okay Okay. Thank you, Guruji. Okay. Okay. God bless you. Okay. Any Guruji, other question? question? Yes, Rashmi. Guruji, I have a question. Uh, Go ahead, you Rashmi. You said we'll have to keep. We have to keep the food uh, outside for them to take. So is that mandatory? When they are in our, they can take it anywhere, right? Yeah. no this is not mandatory it's a ritual i'm just explaining what is the significance of the ritual if if in your culture it is not there just don't do it it's okay no that it's fine hmm. you don't have to but i'm just saying that those who do what is the purpose of that it is quite possible they offered the food and uh, they but departed so they not came there not even for a one that is also a possibility another question i have guruji yes uh, they say uh, when somebody departs for example uh, my mother passed away only mm -hmm. the sons are eligible for doing the rituals so mm -hmm. uh, is that true uh, the moment the daughters are married they are not they are not following that 
system. So how do we explain that? Okay. Um, you see that in the policy of our group, I have told that I will not comment on any religious or any particular custom. Okay. So I will not talk about that. Only I'll talk about in the spiritual point of view. Hmm. Spiritual point of view, it does not matter man or woman or son or daughter. They are all same. Okay. We choose which will be our gender in the next birth. Soul wise, there is no gender discrimination. Okay. From soul point of view, this discrimination is nonsense. Okay. Okay. So there is no you know, spiritual reason that that cannot happen. Okay, so it is all equal. We choose our one one life we can choose as a uh, male, another life as a female and so on and so forth. We have a choice. So when we incarnate, then there is no point from the soul point of view or spiritual point of view. Anybody will be any anything different from anyone, whether it is skin color, whether it is a, you know, look or nothing. I think from soul point of view, because what we are discriminating against, maybe in the next life, you have to come into that form. And in fact, soul does that to have that experience, to come to the maturity that this doesn't matter. OK, so they take different, different baths in the different, different caste system, different type of skin color, different nationality, different economic in their level, different intellectual level. Some people take birth as stupid just to have an experience how it feels like to be the other side. <clears throat> okay. So that's how that's how it works. So for me, from a spiritual point of view, anybody can do that ritual. Means any uh, when a son or daughter, both are equally empowered to do that. Thank you so much, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Rajdeep, I have a question. Yes. Yes, right. You see, uh, you see, we hear about Pitru Dosh, you know, yeah. the Pandit or so many people say that you have got Pitru Dosh mm -hmm. and you have to do the rituals during this Pitru Paksh, which yeah. is, I think, any time now, mm -hmm. maybe 15 days after from today. Uh, yeah. So what is the significance of this Pitru Dosh and how do we get over them with rituals? Okay. I mean, uh, I know you won't comment on rituals, but yeah. just trying to understand from the spirituality point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, see, uh, Pitrudosh is meant by maybe your father has taken some loan but not repaid. You have an option to repay it and get your father clear from his debt. That is understanding. Okay. okay. So there is some kind of uh, rituals have been developed so that you energetically you can balance it so that for that your father need not to take birth again to repay the debt <clears throat> so that way you are helping your father to move forward so that he need not to come back just to settle the debt that is a spiritual understanding okay now whether it's effective or not whether without that you cannot do in other way or not that's a different question. Okay. To me, spiritually speaking, you can do even without going through the ritual. You can do that by simply by prayer. Okay. You can connect to, connect to your forefathers and if they, you know, if they are willing, they can, you can get the glimpse what needs to be done and it can be done. Okay. Okay. So that is, that is all possible. But that particular Pitrudosh is that is something as not settled energetically. There is some imbalance there in, in your family. So you are on their behalf, you are doing it. Like it's a collective debt or something, you are repaying. That's it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Guruji, I have a question, um, Guruji. Yeah. So yes. sometimes yes. we hear about um, uh, a curse that has been passed through generations. You know, we call it like a, a shab, shabal in Tamil. Uh, is, how true is that, uh, Guruji? And uh, is there something, because when they read a kundli or something, they say somebody, some ancestors uh, have done something and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to pay the price. Is that is that true? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so, see, let us uh, uh, understand from the other, other side. 
every family has some kind of um, pattern. It can be good or bad. In this higher dimension, there is no good or bad thing. It, maybe a family tree wanted to experience something. Okay, so they have something in the family agenda. <clears throat> So you can call it a curse or you can call it a blessing. It's up to you. Okay, but they have an, try to experience something. So what happens before you take birth? You have a choice to join that or not, that family. If you join, then you collectively inherit that. Then it will be put it as a part of your DNA. When you take birth, the DNA, when the designing will be done, that will be part of that. Okay, so that's why it comes, uh, some of the aspects you choose to experience as a part of that family. Right. Okay, suppose I'm just saying, uh, so, uh, Manav, you have to, uh, uh, you um, unmute and ask me the question. I, I don't normally read all this thing written there. Okay, after this question, Manav, you unmute and ask me this question. Okay, now Sulava, to your um, to answer your uh, question. So we choose whether we we need to go into that or not. That family thing. Okay, so if we accept it, then it becomes a part of our responsibility to go into that. Suppose I'm just say, giving some kind of some some funny example to make it understand. Suppose one family decided that all their all in the, their family, their height will be six feet and above. That is their characteristics. Okay. Now, when you take birth into that family, you will automatically get six feet height, whether you like it or not after birth. You can call it as a curse. Why everybody is so tall? I'm not getting a match for marriage. That's a different issue. But you, you choose to come into that family, that characteristic you have chosen to get adopted into that one. That you cannot get away after taking birth. But before birth, you have a choice. Okay, that's that's how it works. Okay, Sulama. Thank you, Guruji. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay, Manav. <coughs> or Pritiji, I'll come back to you. Manav. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I just want to ask that, uh, as you said, they feel the sadness for us and uh, they know everything. So I just want to know that uh, whether we follow a right path or wrong path, so how we are getting protected by the our ancestors shows that uh, yes we whatever we, the path we have chosen is right for us wrong for us so how they are protecting us no they are not protecting you you have to protect yourself okay you have a free will they cannot interfere okay so if you seek their guidance through prayer you will get their guidance blessings that way you will get protected yourself but you have to ask for it Okay, you have to pray and ask, if take, uh, you know, the prayer through that, the blessings of the forefathers. In the, some cultures, they ritualistically do it before any kind of good ceremony in the family. Like before marriage, they take the blessings of all forefathers. You know, so this kind of thing. So you have to ask for their blessings. They cannot protect you as physically. Because you have a free will. If you like to jump from 10 story building, they cannot come and stop you there. Okay, because mind is controlling you that time. But in your normal course of time, you can always seek their blessings. So their blessings will be there with you energetically. Okay, so they can protect you not physically, but energetically. How they can do is they allow so that no, you know, some kind of dark energy or black energy is coming and interfering in your life. They can protect you from that. Somebody is doing black magic. They can protect you from that because that is the energy level. They can do that. Okay. So, okay. so this way they will protect you, but not physically. Physically, you are, you are under control of your ego mind and you have a free will. They cannot interfere. So you have to seek their blessings, take that. That way they can energetically protect you and you lead your life. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Priti ji, okay. Please ask your question. Yeah, my problem is same. You see, like we have few properties on a, in our in-laws name, mother-in-law and father-in-law. 
it's mm. uh, years you know like for 20 years they were expert till now we are not able to sell one property single piece also from that uh, do we have to change the names from their in laws to our name or do we have to do some rituals or uh, anything you can suggest to sell those properties yeah, this, this is a legal issue i cannot suggest uh, you know uh, on this matter Uh, to get the yeah. ask words from there, are they hindering with their names? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I understood. No, they are not hindering anything. It was in their name they left the body. So whatever in their name now, if you wanted to utilize that, go in the legal way and get it settled. I think that that is possible. Okay, but they are not stopping. You know, this is this is not a right understanding. Okay, they are stopping you to get their property. What they will do with their property? They don't need it. or do you we know, have to get more blessings or something like do it no you can you can you can pray to them so that all legal process complete smoothly that you can do okay but okay. reverse is not true they are not stopping you to have it okay 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 they already move on you know you just you know use your own uh, uh, the legal or things to get it settled and you can you know transfer it to your name give an appeal to the court and whatsoever those are possible those are legal channels and you put their death certificate saying they are left and we are the legal heir or the That's of this exactly. property and that can be done okay but they are not stopping but you can always take their blessings so that from your side you are clean you know you are not feel like you are their property you are taking out that kind of stuff no, that we is don't have anything of that sort in a heart yeah mm -hmm. they were also pure souls and we are also you know like still we get blessings from we try to get yeah, yeah. them just pray to them and go ahead with your legal thing ask uh, the lawyer to what is the process and do the process through court okay yes. okay. okay yeah thank you so much thank you all right guruji sorry i have another question guruji sure go ahead uh, there was this uh, uh, question about family so i thought we are all souls individual souls so do we collectively make it as a family of souls how does that work yeah good question yeah, there there is something called soul family soul group they take birth in the different forms and the different things you know that is that is quite possible okay so there is a soul family they take you know lifetime after lifetime different that's what i was earlier saying that uh, some grandmother can uh, you know choose to be in the family again as a granddaughter it's quite possible okay so they are within the same group experiencing different relationships okay so these are all possibilities so and normally the soul groups are there they choose to take birth and have that experience many lifetimes together that's quite possible okay that's normal thank you they don't have to means it is not that ki nobody can leave this group it's not that but they choose to be in the group thank you okay sir i have one Rubin, question i have one question um okay um narvekar and who else Okay, Narvikar, go ahead. Uh, Uma, I'll come back to you. Narvikar, go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, since we are talking about you know the departed souls and uh, you know, what, see, uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, you know like some soul who's already departed, not actually your family member or anything, because in a professional thing or in personal thing, you deal with so many people. Yeah. And you have exercise. i mean you you have you, you can uh, you know like some deal or maybe some personal uh, uh, agreement uh, you know the other party try to uh, you know they they breach the contract or whatever it is mm -hmm. and then you have exercised that power of penalizing them when you have option mm -hmm. you can penalize them or you don't penalize them of course the penalty is way whatever you know it's it's not very significant or anything mm -hmm. now maybe maybe at some later stage i feel that okay i should have said okay let it go i should not have penalized them but you know you are uh, so maybe uh, sometimes i think okay what i did was not right 
I had power to forget it, but I did not. So I such thing like uh, you think that okay, that soul maybe uh, not not really, you know, I have not very good relation with that particular soul, mm -hmm. or maybe it it sometimes it bothers, sometimes it not. You know, it's not very thing, but that thought comes to your mind that okay, that soul mm. you should have made peace with him. Mm. How we can do that? See, this is called, uh, uh, forget about your particular example, okay, for any case, okay, suppose you see some, um, some kind of uh, uh, a clash happened, some kind of, you know, disagreement happened or something happened, you feel it could have been done better or something, some mistake has happened from your side, in that case, you can make amends, okay. You can make amends uh, uh, there if it is a living person, then you can just part of the amendment process is you just call or contact directly, just say I'm sorry and matter ends there. You have to you have to say sorry, not ask. You have to ask for forgiveness, not to get forgiveness. Okay. Energetically you're disconnected. You say sorry for that. Whether they, whether that person respond to you shouting at you or they say, oh, it doesn't matter. I even forget about all these things. All are possibilities. So this is called making amends. Why we need to make amends? Because we need to clean our energy system. This becomes our blocks for our growth. We need to get out of the guilt, shame or any kind of this kind of, you know, feeling within us. So this is our energetic cleansing process. We call making amends. Things got tricky if that person is no longer in the physical body. Yes. Yeah. So that is where your question is. Still, you have to make amends, but this time you have to make amends like a prayer. Okay. You have to sit down particularly with the purpose because you have to say, Ki, this is what has happened knowingly, unknowingly. I might have done some something wrong to you. I am sorry for that. I unconditionally ask forgiveness from you. Okay, so you do it in the prayer and if necessary, do it three three times or four times till you get out of that feeling. You need to confirm what the other person, how do I know actually forgiven or doesn't matter. You have to just ask for it so that it cleans your system. It doesn't matter what the other person deserves it or not, whether actually forgiven or not, doesn't matter. It is the cleansing of your system. Okay, so that is the way to make amends. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Let's see. Yes, Uma, go ahead. Sir, I wanted to share the experience. Actually, yeah. whenever I see uh, deep in the sky, uh, I will uh, like uh, I will be able to see pranic energy. Uh, with that, I will always see, like uh, sometimes I will see two bubbles like uh, uh, circles. One is transparent and one is uh, with the dot. Uh, is that an orb or anything I couldn't uh, understand, yeah. sir? No, it is possible. Yeah. Possible is orb, but uh, uh, let us not go into the characteristics of the orbs and what does that mean and don't bust your brain with us. Just say it is some entities and they are visiting you and they are harmless. It's just say thank you for visiting it's like that. It's very small, small orbs. Right? Doesn't it's matter. Small. It can be small, it can be big like a football, but doesn't matter. Oh, okay. It is their choice how they look like, you know. Like in the physical body, we can be thin and we can be fat also. No? So it doesn't matter how you appear. No? But it is like an entity. It is a personality. So you're just talking to that personality. I say thank you for visiting. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. That's it. But, but as you are saying, we can see the orb in the naked eye if you raise our vibration. PVF is high at a certain level. You can see people's aura. You can see the orbs in the naked eye. All are possible. And then you are talking about that. Uh, the pranic energy, it, uh, um, it it can be seen like a small, small, uh, um, what is called small, uh, the, uh, from the egg when the fish starts or the frog. Silver. Hmm? 
silver fish like to that sir yeah it just with a head and little tail that kind Larva. of yeah, Larva. yeah 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 so they, they in in the air you can see those kind of things um those are the pranic energies so that you can see in the naked eye if your vibration is high even some people normally they don't see but when they sneeze and do something suddenly they see some those kind of things flying here and there so those are the uh, those are the pranic energies in the air when you breathe in they get enter into your body those are the energy forms okay all right any other question so it is good that uh, learning session was limited so that we can answer a lot of questions because this area is uh, Sir. very much uh, fertile area yes shweta you want to ask something uh, yes sir sir first of all sir i uh, thank you so much sir again for this guru tatva as you say that this is guru tatva <laughs> yes this is immense unconditional love okay sir uh, i wanted to ask then uh, this um, whole life is like a soul contract getting birth here and everything the choosing the family and everything so yeah. uh, it is very important to clean ourselves energetically as much as we can correct and and settle the karma sir that is yeah. the, that is the main goal that is my, my uh, we are looking at very physical level that suppose uh, somebody is saying my goal is to become ias officer but the yeah. main goal of life is to settle the karma right that's correct your purpose of life is to settle all the karma get liberated from it okay and then when the, all these karmas are settled then you get a chance to move higher and the exit path so that you don't have to come back in the life and death cycle so that is a purpose of human life so and because end of the experiences we have to go back to the source that's it that's the only way there is no other way <clears throat> earlier we realized is beta mm -hmm. yes sir and um, this deep sleep uh, there was a uh, slide uh, in which there was about the deep sleep sir so that can be achieved without getting into coma state also because you were oh yes that, uh, what i'm saying is that deep sleep every night we go through whether you like it or not what i'm saying is it is similar to coma coma means they don't get up for days we get up after few hours right but uh, in the coma they cannot get up but the state they are in is similar to our deep sleep okay so that in that deep sleep uh, the soul is active and uh, leaves your body yeah leaves your body suppose you are planning to visit some place tomorrow your soul will go and do some kind of reiki one day before okay and came back so next day when you visit you say we bahut jaan pehchana lag raha hai na you have a deja vu experience those are happens because your soul has already visited that place the night before and then when you see it you never been there but it looks like familiar and sir one thing i would like to share that uh, this thing na you uh, clear that people talk about that soul has taken this form of bird and they have come after that so it is so relieving because everyone was talking after our uh, grandmother le left they were talking she is uh, the cat you see she have taken the form and moving and i was afraid like why they are talking like this why the soul has uh, all, all nonsense <laughs> yeah yeah thank you sir thank you okay god bless you